Chapter 6 She's in my space, groused Gabe. He was at the gym a couple days later with Parker, the dreaded weekend fast approaching. It was a ritual between the pair to go into the gym for an hour or so before work. Marshall sometimes came, depending on what his schedule permitted as he often was in surgery. She's got a ton of stuff, and she's taking up all my space. She's moving in, grunted Parker as he lifted barbells. It's what they do. Women come with a lot of stuff, some of it you won't even be allowed to use. Apparently, there are towels which are only for guests. Did you know that? I never invite anyone into my space. Gabe put down the weights and began to pace, toweling his face. Not anyone. No one comes to my condo. It's my personal place just for me. Now she's invading it. No one? Parker raised an eyebrow. I know you've had a few girlfriends. No one, growled Gabe. Only the cleaning lady and she's just scheduled for once a week. You have never brought any ladies to your place? frowned Parker. No. Gabe let out a gusty sigh. It was easier. No entanglements. That's probably smart. Parker thought about it. That's definitely smart. I'm going to have to move out of the condo, Gabe announced suddenly. I've lived there ever since my last year of college, and now I have to move. Why? questioned Parker. You get the condo if you meet the conditions of the ultimatum. I guess I will sell it, or rent it out. Brit wants to buy a house. A house, snorted Gabe. All for a five-year marriage and a kid. A house. You could keep the condo, Parker pointed out. It's a good exit strategy to have an alternate place. Do I need an exit strategy? Gabe stopped and stared at his brother. Do you have an exit strategy? I definitely do, confirmed Parker. I bought this nice little condo years ago, which I rent out. If things get particularly bad, I have at least got my condo since it's paid out in full. I've listed it as excluded in the prenup. You have a prenup? Gabe wondered what else he had forgotten. Yup, verified Parker. You need one too. It's Brit. Gabe shrugged, not convinced either way. For some reason, ending the marriage was as bad of an idea as beginning it. The whole marriage thing was a nightmare in his opinion. I'm sure she'd be okay to split things as we come into the marriage. Not if you buy anything together, Parker advised as he kept working out. What you purchase as a couple will get split differently. You need to set out the rules. Get a prenuptial agreement. It's just good sense, unless you're planning to stick together for the long haul. Even then, you can't really be too careful. People's marriages fall apart all the time. Plus, you know how competitive Brick can be. Imagine her with a lawyer on her side. Parker had a point, Gabe acknowledged. I'll have to talk to my attorney. Good idea, Parker puffed. You do that. What else am I forgetting? Gabe asked. Worried now that he was thinking about things falling apart at the end of the marriage, which was to be expected, Gabe firmly told himself. They were married for only five years. That was all he needed to put up with Brick for. It was certainly long enough. Probably a lot of things. Parker set down the weights and began ticking suggestions on his fingers. Like a bachelor party? A new suit or tux, depending how formal Mom is making this affair. The honeymoon, fertility testing. Fertility testing? Gabe looked at his brother in surprise. We all like to think our swimmers are the best, but we only have a year to prove ourselves, advised Parker. I want to know right out of the gate if there are any issues which might prevent a pregnancy. My missus and I are going to the clinic to get tested. If we need treatments to make a baby happen, then we're getting it done right away. And she's okay with it? wondered Gabe. Parker shrugged. It's part of the deal. We need to have a kid within a certain time frame. Britt said she already had her fertility checked, frowned Gabe. Is that a thing? Do women just randomly have their fertility checked when they're thinking of getting married? Maybe once they're past a certain age, offered an uncertain Parker. Who really knows what goes through the minds of women? I suppose I should get checked, murmured Gabe, even though he was reluctant to do so. Gabe might run hospitals, but it didn't mean he was fond of going to see a doctor. 
Do we really need to do the honeymoon? This is just a business deal. First, the brides will expect it. Second, it's a vacation. Why not have a vacation? asked Parker. I don't take vacations, responded Gabe in all seriousness. Which is why you should take one, affirmed Parker. He stood, putting a hand on Gabe's shoulder. Big brother, you are a workaholic. Take at least one week for the honeymoon. Go someplace nice. Don't bring any work with you. What would I do if I didn't bring any work? asked Gabe, thinking the idea over. Explore, relax, enjoy your wife, suggested Parker with a bit of sarcasm. Maybe be less than a robot? You need a better work-life balance, or you're gonna end up being like Nate, pushing a heart attack before you're fifty. Dad worked into his seventies, defended Gabe. He still does to an extent. Dad isn't exactly the best role model, observed Parker dryly. Gabe paused. Parker was more right about their father than he possibly knew. Gabe made a decision. Fine, I'll plan a honeymoon. Where are you going? Oh, no, chuckled Parker. You find your own place. Something Brittany would like. He would do it, Gabe resolved. He would call up Tara and find out where Brittany might want to go. It didn't really matter to him where they went for their honeymoon. He would prefer something which provided decent security and a comfortable living space. Hopefully not a resort. Gabe didn't want to be around other people. He could do this, Gabe reasoned. He would call Tara from the office during his lunch break. Afterward, he would dump the matter into a capable travel agent's hands with a few stipulations and have it all taken care of. I told him we were getting a dog. Brittany sighed as she sipped her coffee. She was sitting in a cozy armchair in Tara's office as her friend tried to design a layout on her desk. A dog? Do you even want a dog? Tara paused, looking up from her paperwork, red pen in hand. Not really, but it was easier to argue about a dog than about buying a house, shrugged Brittany, or me moving into his condo. I don't get it. We agreed it would be the sensible thing to do. I would take the spare bedroom until the wedding, and the realtor could show my condo at any time to potential buyers. It's a win-win situation. He probably feels like everything's happening a bit fast, mentioned Tara. Gabe needs to be guided gently into things. He's skittish. He also likes to think things are his idea. Yes, but it just takes so long for him to come around, complained Brittany. She admired her engagement ring a moment, a fissure of happiness working its way through her body. It was a lovely ring. Then figure out a way to make him think the house is his idea, shrugged Tara. All men can be manipulated. You just need to finesse him a little. Do you manipulate Rex? asked Brittany sweetly. I'm sure he wouldn't appreciate it. On rare occasions, admitted Tara. Mostly he and I compromise, so I don't have to manipulate him. Rex and I understand each other. I have tried quoting scientific studies since Gabe is so logical. I have been compromising on the house and school for our future child. I even held back on putting some of my stuff out because I could see the pained expression on his face every time I clutter up his precious condo, sighed Brittany. I want a house where it's new and fresh for both of us, where there'll be space to put our things. Then perhaps he won't be so territorial. We need to get out of the condo. It's going to be a point of contention if we stay there. Plus, it's too small to raise a child. He agreed to go house hunting, right? Questioned Tara. She put down her pen and leaned back in her chair, conceding she wasn't about to get any work done as long as Brittany was fixated on this subject. Only because if I said he didn't, I would choose for both of us, and then he would have to live in it for the next five years, pointed out Brittany. Tara winced. Gabe doesn't take too well to ultimatums. He looked like he was going to be ill, but in the end, he agreed, shrugged Brittany. I guess he just doesn't trust me to pick out a home we'll both like. A house is a big decision. He needs to be part of the process, gently advised Tara. Which is why I had to bully him into it, nodded Brittany. 
Tara noticed the intercom light on her phone light up. Pressing the button, she answered, Yes, Madeline? Mr. Gabriel Ramsley is on line one, replied Madeline. Thank you, calmly responded Tara. She raised an eyebrow at Brittany before picking up the receiver and putting it to her ear so Brittany could only hear her side of the conversation. Tara Hudson. Brittany made a face at her. Tara made one back as she listened. I'm not certain. I would have to think about it. Abruptly, Brittany set down her coffee, quickly striding toward the desk, her hand reaching out for the speaker button. Tara's hand snaked out and grabbed Brittany's wrist to prevent her from pressing the button. Let me get back to you. Brittany used her other hand to hit the tiny button. Goodbye, Gabe. Tara hung up the phone, leaning back in her swivel chair with a satisfied smile. Why did he call? exploded Brittany. What did he want? I'm not sure I should tell you, a smug Tara answered. It is a private conversation between your best friend and your groom. Tara, I love you, but I will tear every hair from your head and you will be bald in my wedding photos, threatened Brittany. You would not. Tara rolled her eyes. Your mother would have a conniption if you did, and you know you can't abide Naomi when she's having an episode. True, sighed Brittany, deflating. She eyed Tara. Can I bribe you with the best lunch in the city as my treat? A lunch bribe is acceptable, conceded Tara. Mr. Ramsley is curious to know where his bride might want to go for a honeymoon. Brittany sank into the chair across from the desk, feeling slightly dazed. He asked for ideas for the honeymoon? Yes, he did, confirmed Tara. I guess he's a little more involved than I thought. Good for you, Britt. Maybe you can make a go of this marriage. Brittany beamed in delight. Where should I tell him we should go? What about backpacking through Indonesia or Peru? I will take care of this, said Tara confidently. I'm going to find somewhere both of you will enjoy. The last thing you want is a honeymoon where someone is sick, unhappy, or gets hurt. You should start your marriage off happy. I didn't expect a honeymoon, admitted Brittany. I'm so happy. I'll call him back later with a couple of ideas. Tara grabbed her purse. Now, let's go to lunch. The Weekend Fifteen Days until the wedding. The last place we saw was great, protested Gabe as he pulled up to the curb of a quiet neighborhood. The trees were mature on the street, framed in by large traditional houses. A park was in sight with kids playing. You liked the last place because it was all modern. Brittany looked around in delight at the surroundings. It was sharp edges, windows, and glass furniture. Kids need to be raised in places where they can get dirty and occasionally break something by accident. Gabe shuddered. His quiet, risk-free life was being turned upside down. It had all the modern amenities. A pool, gym, proper security. It was a great place. Not to raise a child, declared Brittany as she got out of the car. Are you coming? Gabe admitted defeat and got out of the car. He looked at the two-story house with yellow siding, which their realtor Candy had insisted was exactly what Brittany was looking for. Walking to the driveway, he stood beside Brittany as she gazed in delight at the house, with its large windows and black shutters. Why is the door red? It's a decorative touch. Brittany practically crooned in delight. Can you imagine hanging a Christmas wreath on the door? It will look so pretty. We could light up the small pine tree, and there's room for Santa's sleigh, or maybe one of those inflatable snowmen. Like he was going to have tacky junk on his lawn. Gabe frowned. Why would you want that? Wouldn't it be fun? Kids love those sorts of things. Brittany happily grabbed his hand and pulled the reluctant Gabe to the front door. Did you see the park down the street? I want to go to have a quick look after we're done here. We could spend Sunday afternoons there in the summer having picnics and playing with our son. Gabe had the feeling Brittany was romanticizing this whole parenthood thing. Are you certain you don't want to rethink the having a nanny idea? We are not getting a nanny, 
Brittany calmly repeated. She figured it was progress that he had left his hand in hers as she opened the front door. We are going to raise this child. We already discussed this. Studies show children whose parents are actively involved in their lives are happier. What is your definition of actively involved? wondered Gabe before his question was forgotten by the over-enthused realtor greeting them. You're here, trilled the happy candy. Isn't it just to die for? The perfect family home with four bedrooms, a downstairs office, large open concept kitchen, and modernized bathrooms done in a traditional style. This home is in pristine condition. The roof was just replaced last year. It's hard to believe it's nearly a hundred years old. One of the oldest homes in this neighborhood of this size. They modeled other homes in the area after this one. Roofs need to be replaced? frowned Gabe. He had never really thought about it before. Roofs were just there, keeping the rain out. How often did one replace a roof? What other things would he need to know about being a new homeowner? The condo company took care of maintenance issues. Who would take care of them if there was no condo board to oversee these sorts of things? Just every twenty years or so. Candy gave him an uncertain laugh, wondering if he was kidding or not. Now, you two love birds, take a tour around. I'm sure you'll be more than happy with what you see. Gabe could see Brittany nearly purring with pleasure as she oohed and awed over the moldings, high ceilings, and large rooms. Not nearly as impressed, Gabe followed in her footsteps. A fireplace! Brittany's eyes lit up. Could you imagine a nice wood fire on a cold winter evening? He was not hauling wood and playing with matches. Gabe had zero idea of how to properly do a wood fire, let alone inside a house. Fires are dangerous. Our baby could get burnt, or an ember can fly out and set the rug on fire. Plus, the fireplace itself is always dirty. A baby will crawl in there and then make tracks all over the rug. Brittany's face fell with disappointment. She gave the fireplace one last longing look. I suppose you're right. Gabe suddenly felt like he had kicked a puppy. It was obvious Brittany was falling in love with the house and the silly sentimental ideas which came with it. He had just torn away one of those ideas. Before he could stop himself, Gabe offered a compromise. We could buy one of those things that would cover the hole. A stand? Brittany doubtfully replied. A screen, spoke Candy with confidence as she straightened a vase. It's a fireplace screen. Fine, a screen. Gabe restrained from rolling his eyes. We won't use it unless the baby's put to bed or in one of those foldable pens. A playpen? A laugh escaped Brittany, and her eyes twinkled in merriment. Whatever, gruffly replied Gabe. He tried to ignore the warmth spreading through him as a result of Brittany's amusement. I suppose you'll want a Christmas tree in here. I would like that. Brittany smiled and his heart kicked out an extra beat in response. Gabe scowled. He wandered off into the office as Candy enticed Brittany into the kitchen, the two women talking about counter space and cabinets. Gabe looked around the calm shelves full of books. The big wooden desk and leather chair set just before a pair of French doors which led to the backyard. The room was comfortable. Gabe could see himself working in this room. Not that he wanted to admit it. Opening a French door, he had a peek at the backyard. It was a mess. There was a yellow circle of grass. Hardly any landscaping was there. There was a nice patio area, but nothing much else. Gabe shut the door and went to find Brittany in the kitchen. A quick inventory of counter space told him there wasn't enough area for all the mixing machines and other devices she had accumulated for cooking or baking. Something would have to be done about the need for space, otherwise no one would be able to see the countertop for all her small appliances. The worst part was he knew she had ordered more of the equipment on a gift registry for the wedding. Shuddering, Gabe tried not to think of all of Britt's clutter, instead focusing on the backyard. What is wrong with the lawn? What do you mean? questioned Brittany in concern, shutting the oven door to look at him. There's a huge yellow dead patch. Gabe picked up an appetizing apple out of a bowl, only to discover it was plastic. 
Irritated, he put it back. There are small yellow patches everywhere back there. The owners took down an above-ground pool, explained Candy. There might have been a spill of pool chemicals, which killed a little bit of grass. The yard would have to be fixed, decided Gabe. What sort of people had an above-ground pool and plastic fruit? Does it mean that you like the house? ventured a hopeful Brittany. We haven't seen all of it yet. Gabe withheld his liking for the office. He wasn't going to be sold on a house based on a single room, even if it was the most comfortable room he had seen the entire tour of houses they had been on. Brittany looped her arm through his. Show me the backyard. Gabe tried to ignore how her touch made him feel uncomfortable. He didn't like the way she pressed against his side, or how he became hyper-aware of her. However, out of politeness, he couldn't just push away from her, not in front of the realtor. At least, that was what he told himself. Leading the way into the backyard, Candy tried to make up for the patchy grass. I know it's a little rough, but this could become an amazing oasis for the two of you to relax in. There's room for an in-ground pool and yardage to spare. The trees are mature and strong. Maybe a rope swing from one of them? Or a playset over here? The best part, it's already fenced in, sparing you the expense of fencing it. It is big, murmured Brittany as she gazed at the expanse of yard. It has potential. Exactly, pounced Candy on Brittany's words. Potential is right. Think of it as a clean slate to make your own mark on it and create something specific to your needs. I would love some more flowers. Maybe a flowering tree? Just a small one. A wistful Brittany sighed as she squeezed Gabe's arm. We need a playset for the baby. Something he can grow with for most of his childhood. You do know the baby could be a girl, said Gabe absently. He recalled childhood vacations to his cousin's house, which was on the beach, playing in the sand and waves. The beach was too far from here, but maybe a spot with sand in it. Kids liked sand and sandcastles. At least he had when he was younger, as Gabe remembered. Highly unlikely, Brittany interrupted his revelry. Ramsley men have Ramsley sons over 90% of the time, Michael being the exception with his group of girls. Dylan had a girl, protested Gabe, more out of habit than by wanting a girl or a boy. Whatever they had would be fine with him. Shannon was his oldest before she passed. Still, we're more likely to have a boy, so I'm having the nursery painted blue, a confident Brittany told him. Blue with blue plaid accents. It'll be wonderful for our boy. Congratulations about the baby, inserted Candy. I'm so happy for both of you. We aren't having a baby, Gabe quickly assured her. Not yet. I'm not pregnant, added Brittany. We're planning on starting a family right after the wedding. Candy blinked, then stretched a smile across her lips. Then maybe you'd like to see the bedrooms upstairs. There are four of them, plus there's lots of space in the attic for storage. Shall we? Gabe drawled wondering how long the tours were going to last this evening. He had budget reports which needed his attention. "'Isn't this fun?' whispered Brittany as they followed Candy. Gabe thought about giving her a sarcastic response, but realized he didn't want to. Brittany was enjoying this, he realized. Touring houses and imagining a possible future was making her happy. Most of the time, Gabe hadn't seen Brittany very happy. They had been too busy arguing, avoiding each other, or just driving one another crazy. He kind of liked that he was making her happy. Gabe frowned over the thought. It was unexpected, and he wasn't sure it was welcome. This is the guest room, Candy pointed out. Another bedroom is right there. The nursery is right across the hall from the master bedroom. Go on and explore. I'll be waiting in the living room. Brittany continued to babble about how she could make her home office out of the third bedroom and made a beeline for the nursery, dragging Gabe along. The room was a cheery yellow, with odd-looking characters painted on the walls. While Gabe didn't mind the yellow, the cartoonish creatures were creepy. Definitely needs to be repainted, remarked Brittany as she eyed the walls. Oh, look at these tiny clothes. Aren't they just adorable? Brittany held up a small sweater she had found on the top of a dresser. 
it suddenly hit Gabe. This was real. What they were planning to do was very real and couldn't be undone. Children couldn't be returned to a store. They were living beings who needed parents. He felt a spasm of panic in his chest. He hadn't planned on this future that was being shoved on him. Work hours were long, and having a family meant investing time with them. At least it should. His mother had always lamented how many hours their father had spent working, maintaining and growing the family business. As a kid, he had only seen his father during scheduled weekly appointments. When he had grown older, James had spent more time with him, grooming him for the position he was about to take over. Gabe worked sixty hours minimum per week. It was what he logged in at the hospitals and at his desk in his work office. He also brought work home, putting in time after hours. It was his duty. Where was he going to get the time to have a wife and kid? Brittany didn't strike him as the type of woman who would just let him keep working as he already was. This was going to change his entire life. He would have to give more work to Parker. Did Brittany expect him to change diapers? He had no idea how to hold a baby, feed one, or what a baby actually needed. Did they need all those clothes, the accessories, the equipment? Was it just a marketing gimmick to make new moms need all this stuff? What if he or she wasn't okay? What would he do with a baby that was sick? What if he dropped the kid? Would it be messed up for life? The question swirled around in his mind, and the room began to feel way too small. Gabe? A concerned Brittany appeared before him. Are you okay? I'm fine, he gruffly said, trying to cover up his unease. You are not fine, murmured Brittany. You look like you did before you went on the slingshot at Seven Roller Coaster Heaven. It was probably a fair enough comparison, reflected Gabe ruefully. He felt like he was about to go on the scariest ride of his life. I just need a moment, managed Gabe before he abruptly exited the room. Don't you want to see the master bedroom? She called out after him. Gabe didn't answer as he headed down the stairs. Exiting out the front door, he walked quickly to his car, taking deep breaths to try to ease the anxiety clawing at him. Taking out his key fob, Gabe unlocked the Tesla and sank into the driver's seat. He closed his eyes, trying to soak in the familiar smell and feel of the car, when a new thought struck him. Where would he charge the Tesla? It was an electric car. The condo had a charging station. Gabe had never even thought about worrying where to charge his car before. The whole situation was turning his life upside down. Yet, what could he do about it? If he didn't try to adapt, then he would lose his position and his inheritance. Gabe dragged in another breath, concentrating on his breathing. Maybe he should take a leaf out of Brittany's book and make a life plan. Gabe constantly planned things out at work in meticulous detail when it came to his working life. He had never bothered planning his personal life, because he preferred it exactly how as it was. However, now things were going to have to change. He was getting married. There should be a checklist of things he needed to do to get ready for the wedding, and a checklist for being a father and husband. Obviously, he didn't know enough about the risks involved in child-rearing. It was time to become educated, so he could mitigate as many of the risks as possible. Next time Brittany quoted some study at him, he would be prepared and know the answers, Gabe resolved. Then there was the five-year thing. Gabe didn't like having anything unresolved. He and Brittany needed to figure this out immediately. He was going to get his life in order so the anxiety would stop. The passenger door opened and Brittany settled into the car. I told Candy you weren't feeling well and asked her to reschedule the rest of the viewings. It's too bad you didn't see the master bedroom. It's lovely. The closet is huge, and the attached bath has a real traditional feel. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the same rain shower effect that your shower in the condo has, but it's still quite nice. Do you want to buy the house? interrupted Gabe. Well, yes. I like it best of all the places we've looked so far. Brittany frowned in confusion. Why do you ask? We need to decide some things began Gabe firmly. It's important we get this right, and there isn't much time if we're going to move in directly after the wedding. A house is a major purchase, 
We should get an inspection, mentioned Brittany. It could take some time. I'm okay with being in the condo for a little while. Absolutely, agreed Gabe with relief. Why hadn't he thought about that? An inspector would know what needed to be done to the house to make it safe. He felt some relief from the burdens on him. We definitely need an inspection. Brittany looked a little disappointed. Gabe, I still do want a house. I'd like to be moved in before the baby is born, preferably for a few months. You want this house, he surmised. Not if you don't want it. She didn't look at him. Instead, she looked down, fiddling with her engagement ring. Gabe made a decision. It was obvious Brittany loved the house. She had lit up when they had viewed it. It had everything she was looking for. While Gabe could see the faults in it and understand where it could use some improvements, Brittany was happy with it. Denying her the house was petty even if the location was going to be an inconvenience to him. One of them should be happy. We need to get an inspection on it, he grumbled. Her eyes lit up with hope as Brittany faced him. She grabbed his forearm in excitement. Are you sure? If it passes an inspection, we'll make an offer, he promised grimly. Brittany beamed in delight and flung her arms around his neck in a tight hug. Before he could move, she surprised him with a quick kiss, then bounced happily in her seat, looking at the house. I love this house. It's going to be a great home for the three of us. No dog. The words popped out before he could stop them. Gabe was reeling from the unexpected contact with Brittany. His next proclamation surprised him even more. Maybe something small, like a hamster or a gerbil. Those can be kept in a cage, can't they? Who will clean the cage out? Brittany questioned with a bit of humor. The kid will, which is why he can't have one until he's old enough to take care of it, declared Gabe. Okay, smiled Brittany in satisfaction. Gabe nodded. He could do this. If he could negotiate her down from the dangerous stuff, maybe this would work. You don't seem happy about the house, she remarked thoughtfully. I like it, he muttered. You don't like it, sighed Brittany. We need to have a home both of us want. I want the house, insisted Gabe. Don't lie to me. Folding her arms, Brittany leveled him with a serious look. I'm not lying, Gabe tried again to convince her. The yard has potential. You hate the yard, responded Brittany. Okay, I hate the yard, agreed Gabe. He paused for a moment, then decided to level with her. It's not what I would choose for myself, but this isn't about me. This is about the both of us. It's about the baby we agreed to have together. It means we both need to compromise. If this house makes you happy and is ideal to raise a family, then we'll buy this house after it's been thoroughly inspected. You didn't like one thing about the house? She asked, a little despondent at his practical answer. Gabe sighed. Brittany wasn't going to be satisfied, unless she thought he liked the house at least a little. Then he thought about the office. I liked the downstairs office. Really? Brittany perked up. What did you like about it? I don't know, he shrugged. It was comforting. I could see having my stuff there and getting some work done. Brittany was more than happy with his answer. Should we call Candy and let her know our decision, or would it be too soon? Call her, said Gabe before he could change his mind, for an inspection only. The last thing we want to buy is a place infested with termites or something worse. When did you get so negative? Half complained Brittany as she rooted through her purse for her phone. When did you get so happy? He retorted. Was he a negative person? Gabe thought of himself as practical. When you decided to marry me, Brittany replied blissfully as she scrolled through her contacts to find Candy. Gabe wasn't sure he wanted the responsibility for making Brittany happy. If you enjoyed this chapter of Convincing Him, Book 9 of the Ramsley Brothers series, look for the next chapter. Also, you can find the Ramsley Brothers series on Amazon. All books, 1 through 10, are currently there and available in ebook, paperback, or as an audible book. Happy listening!